Good morning, YouTube. It is uh, January the... I don't even know what the date is today. January the 6th, Wednesday morning. Uh, I got a couple things I got to do. I figured I would take y'all along for the ride. I got an invoice here that I have to deliver. You can see with my company logo. Uh, because it's some elderly people I did work for and they don't do emailing, so... I told them I would bring them a copy of the invoice. Um, and then that's, and then I have a customer that I've done work for. I did a double change out for him back in October or September, September, October. And now he's got a house being built behind his house. I think it's for a, a son or a daughter or something like that. <laughs> and it's ready for air and he wants me to do the air in it and he's going to pay me normally I don't do new construction because I'm not working for builders because builders want HVAC guys to do a $10,000 job for three or 4000 but the homeowner told me and again, I've already I've already done a double change out for him. So he told me that it will be him paying for the HVAC, not the contractor. And I said, I'm fine with that. So we're going to go look at that, see what all needs to be done. Then we're going to go see about a Goodman package unit. It's a customer that bought... <laughs> Uh, bought the package unit off of Facebook and a friend that that you know knew how to do air conditioning hooked it up and he said it worked great I don't know for two, three, four months I can't remember but now nothing happens, nothing's working, nothing's coming on. So we're gonna go see about that. And then I have a maintenance after that. So, uh, you know, it's, it's, the, it's, it's the beginning of the year, it's right after the holidays. This is very normal in Louisiana. This is very, very slow time right now. January and February are my two slowest months. It happens every year, I hate it. But at least I have a couple things to do this morning. And the new construction job would actually be good for me right now because I am so slow that it would give me uh, a couple day, you know, a few days worth of work. And of course, you know, we'll have to come back for trim out and start up and all that, which is fine. But the rough end part, give me a couple days worth of work and a chance to make some decent money since I can actually charge what the job is worth since the homeowner's paying for it. So we'll see how this goes today and see if we can get any film on any of this stuff. I'll put these two 16 sear uh, rude units in. Uh, these are 16 sear, two and a half ton, three ton. We did a double change out. Uh, my 16 sear package comes with a Wi-Fi thermostat. It's automatically included when you buy a 16 sear. It's not included in my 14, but it is included in my 16. Anyway, um, everybody here in Lafayette seemed to be out of stock on Wi-Fi thermostats. All they had was the little crappy ones. And on a 16 sear, I provide the Honeywell 9000 and nobody had them. So I had to order them. I got them in. I came here today to put them on and I just wanted to show you all these two 16 sear rude units. They came out very nice. Nice twins with the line sets. We put a new whip on this one because the whip was a little too short. So we just replaced it and we reused the old whip. You can see right there we have a RA 1630. Two and a half times 16 sear. And this one is a RA 1636, 16 sear, three ton, ECM, condenser fan motors. You can see the module there on top. 
Same thing on this one. Nice machines, Copeland scroll compressors. One screw and this whole panel comes off to access the coil. Also to uh, switch the badges, like if the badge is over here, you take the screw out, you swap the panels. So anyway, uh, it's a nice looking job. At least I think it is. Okay, here's our Goodman package unit. 14 sear, three and a half ton from 2018, so it is used. You can see the wonderful job they did hooking up the duct. <laughs> but I can hear it buzzing and he's saying nothing's happening, so. Let's see, the electrical is over here on these. Okay, so what we hear is the transformer buzzing. Let's take a look. Oh, look, we got a fuse right here. The common is not hooked up. Everything else is. Okay, so they are breaking the fuse off of the, uh, the fuse is definitely blown. Let's get the common hooked up. It looks like the common didn't have all the slack in it, and that's why they didn't hook it up. Oh, that's no good. I just pulled that off the contactor. I don't know if they have the high voltage on or not. Let's take a look. That might help me to not get shocked. Okay, so it's definitely hot. Let's see if I can get some slack out of this uh, common wire. There we go. I'm guessing that's where that that went to the contactor. I don't see anywhere else it would go. Yeah, this one went straight back to the transformer. somewhere I've got one fuse left so I'm gonna use my little short pro tool until I figure out what the hell's going on here Okay, 
it's not. Ted, there's your tan wire nuts you were talking about. Try this again, see if I can get this thing to bite. There we go. Now I got it to, to bite. All right, let's pull this makeshift fuse off. So they were trying, so these didn't touch, but all they had to do was use some insulated stakeons and they could have solved that problem. But, you know, that's why you call a professional to do it. All right. So, we have the short Pro Tool. It lights up. You don't have to take it off. I said, if you don't have one, I suggest you get one. It's much better than the little popper. Sometimes the little popper won't pop fast enough. And, uh, you could still fry your transformer, especially if you have the five amp. So we're not lit up at all right now. So what I wanna do is jump some functions out. And the way we can do that is we can do that by just attaching right here to the red with the short pro tool and then jumping out each function. A lot of these wires are pulled really tight from installation. Um, let's, uh, let's try the fan first and let's take this bottom cover off so because I believe the blower motor is behind me. is that the only screw there's definitely screws missing to this machine yep and it is a ooh it's an X13 fan motor And we have a breaker off down in here. So here's what we have down here. We have an X13 fan motor with, God damn, they got all kind of different. They have a speed for fan only, air conditioning and heat, electric heat. One of the breakers is off. I'm not sure why. Our tool, I'm gonna to try to prop it up here in case it lights up on us. This tool will light up blue if there's a short. Okay, right there. Let's take a jumper. And uh, let's, let's grab, uh, let's grab this red right here with the short pro tool and grab green. Oh, there she is. She was in delay. Okay. So let's pull this cover off. So they have a 15 kW heat strip in here and they put jumpers so I'm not sure why and they must only want to run 10 kW. Alright let's shut that fan off. Now we're going to go to the heat. We're waiting for the delay on the blower to shut off. Okay, that transformer sure is loud. All right, so now I'm gonna jump. I already have the red still hooked up. I'm gonna jump the heat out. Hopefully you, you guys can see. Okay, here we go. There's the heat.
Ooh. Yeah, that doesn't sound good at all when I do that. Something's wrong with one of them contactors or something. You probably can't see the smoke, but yeah, that contactor. Look at that. That coil is burnt on that contactor. It's the bottom contactor. So we'll have to kill the power. And that is going to be a pain in the ass to get out of there. Okay, so before I take it any further going to unhook the yellow wire. See if I can get some of these wire nuts back on. We'll get the yellow wire off, or I probably could just go straight to the damn contactor with it. Yeah, I can do that. Answer fan and the compressor runs. I'll probably have to jump. Well, no, the blower motor should come on. Yep, there it is. Blower motor's ramped up. You can tell it's definitely on a higher speed. All right, so the AC works. So we got a bad contactor down here. Um, It looks like everything else is working okay. So I want to give a shout out to the engineers at Goodman. Look how I have this nut dry. You know, and got guys from Goodman, I hope y'all watch this video. I had a screw there for the contactor, which was which was easy, no problem. But then y'all go and put one back here. Look at my nut driver. It is wedged against the cabinet and I'm having to do like this with my thumb and my index finger. Just barely make some turns. I mean, come on, Goodman. Why not just put the other one up here? Cause that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put one here and then I'm gonna drill the other one here. Thank goodness for Goodman. All right, guys, I got the new contactor in. Uh, sorry, there was really no good way to get you guys propped up. But if you'll look here, and we'll show Goodman that it's not that hard. I put one screw here, and then the other screw up top here. Now, I can take a nut driver and get to that one and get to this one. Hell, I can even use a drill. Goodman, I can get to the top one with a drill and to the bottom one. I sure in the hell can't get back there with it. Come on, Goodman. I know y'all are Goodman, but y'all can do better than that. All right, so now we're gonna turn the power back on and see if the heat works. All right, so we got the heat working. We got 44 amps. They're only using uh, 10 kW. They're keeping this breaker off. That's all this breaker runs is uh, that contactor right there. Both contactors are pulled in. Oh, it's this one that's buzzing. Okay, let me unhook it. Okay, I thought it was my new contactor, but it's not. It's that old one that's making that noise. So that contactor needs to be replaced too. And I'll make sure and tell him that. There we go. All right, so we got that contactor undone. We have... Uh, Oh, I'm not really sure why. Oh, I bet you because it jumped. Yep, I got to leave that contactor hooked up. To jump to the other one. Maybe I can unhook that brown one in the back back there. And that'll...
because what it's doing is it's piggybacking a common but if I can unhook the hot the brown one there we go now we still got our 10kw try not to get shocked and we have the top contactor shut off and the wire it'll probably handle it but he needs a bigger breaker but we do have his uh heat working at least he's got 10kw worth the heat so i'm gonna button this thing up i'm gonna put a fuse in it and uh see if he wants to go ahead and replace that contactor while we're here or just let it ride with 10kw it's a three and a half ton package unit So we'll see how he wants to go with it. All right, so what I'm doing here is making a new fuse link. If you're gonna make a, I used to carry them in my truck, the ones you can buy from AutoZone or O'Reilly's, but I mean, if you're gonna do it and you're gonna make one, there's nothing wrong with that, but you need to use insulated Stay cons. Don't use the bare ones. That's why they had duct tape on it. So that, because if you do that, it'll just short out. So if you use insulated stay cons, and I'm down to one fuse, that's why I put a, my short pro tool on there. Let me roll this. There we go. And uh, wasn't, definitely wasn't gonna waste a fuse. Okay, that's solid. Let me grab my fuse. I'm gonna stop and pick up some fuses when I leave here. So, if you can see that, bam. Bam, now you have an insulated fuse link that can go in here. And you don't have to put all that tape. Now, if you wanna throw a zip tie around it, so it's not resting on the panel of the unit, that would be a good idea. Get it up off the bottom of the unit. That looks good. I'm happy. And there you go. You got a nice fuse link off the ground, off the floor of the unit, whatever you want to call it. Tuck away that. The fuses, you can see it. It's right in your face like it pops out at you. Hey, there's a fuse here. You know, you always want to know that there's a fuse and you can see it. And it is a five amp. That's all I had left on me. So it'll have to do. All right. Well, uh, before I button this up, let me call the customer and tell him that this contactor is good. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just loud as hell. And that if he wants to use all 15 KW, the wire, yeah, it needs to be bigger. This is a number eight. It needs to be at least a number six. I mean, it's not a far run and we need to upgrade the breaker. So I'll give him a price on all that. But for right now, he's got 10 KW worth of heat. Okay, so before we go, a contactor should read between 10 and 20 ohms across the coil. Anything more than 20 is bad. Anything less than 10 is bad. So if we go from here, 0.5. Sorry, I was waiting on that garbage truck to pass. 0.5. 
So that's definitely what blew our fuse. And we have solved that issue. I will give him a quote to change the breaker from a 50 to a 60 to run 10 kW worth it, or sorry, 15 kW worth of heat. And also to run a new number six wire. And we will see what he wants to do.